one of our great consolations or one of the things that we enjoy so much about our faith is that we have a hope, we have a confidence, we have something to look forward to that goes beyond anything that we see in our present circumstances. Lots of us live in environments where it's not the best that it could be. It's possibly challenging to us. It may even be working counterproductive to our spirit or our soul that at times it may be just very flesh oriented where it drives us nuts or crazy or aggravation seem to always provoke us and it's hard to find peace. Jesus said that in the world we would have tribulation and that we were to expect that on a daily basis, that there would be aggravations, there would be frustrations, there would be challenges that would cause us to remind ourselves that this is not our home, this is not the way it's meant to be, this is not what God intends for us in the eventual end of our life. Because God has made us a promise that there is a better place for us to be. There is a world that we have yet to experience with God in control. And that Jesus will come back and set up. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Because those things are acquired. You have to teach someone to be violent. They don't start off that way. They have to be taught how to do those things. At one time, I remember growing up where it was so easy to just look around and see that the, the biggest thing that people did was like, ooh, you know, maybe pushed each other at, at the most. Now people will pick up a gun and shoot each other. What a sad state of affairs to see how fast within my generation things could have deteriorated so quickly. And yet it happens, and we know that it will happen. So don't be surprised if in your environment that you see things, you experience things that you know may depress you or may aggravate you, may cause you to be wearied because this is a time of the wearying of the saints from overload of prophecy, overload of teachers, overload of political, overload of economic, all these aggravations and pressures that come upon people in order to cause them really to turn to God rather than turn away from Him. But what they do is they stay distracted and go in opposite directions. So for the Christian sometimes the pressure feels so intense that you have to kind of like recognize and realize that this is not your home. You have so much more going on upstairs than you're living in downstairs because this is our basement. And believe me, it ain't nothing worse than living in a basement. <laughs> and this is our basement, so to speak, because we're just occupying until he comes and takes us home. This isn't meant to be the place where you're supposed to set up your kingdom and enjoy it. No. God says this is where you have work to do. This is the work environment that you're called to go out and experience and to do as he sends you out. But this is not meant to be your home. If this is your home and you enjoy it, there's something wrong with your world and something wrong with your life. Everlasting Consolation I will remember my covenant with you in the days of thy youth, and I will establish it to you an everlasting covenant. By one offering hath he perfected forever them that are sanctified. He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? The Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. This is not your rest. Here we have no continuing city, but we do seek one that is yet to come. That realization that this is not our city, this is not our home, that God himself will wipe away every tear, causes me to recognize that, you know, there are people, sadly, and this is where we need to be real about our life as well as the people around us. There are those that will condemn themselves to hell and die without hope. There are those who will perish in ignorance and wind up having chosen that ignorance over the knowledge of God, sending themselves to eternal punishment in an everlasting lake of fire. There are those that we will know that have gone to hell. God shall wipe away every tear. 
There's nothing that can be done for a man who chooses to go the way that God had told him not to go. There's nothing that can be done for the person who refuses to the dying breath, the very last moment that they gasp for air, that their spirit suddenly is alive and wakened once they pass through death's door into this other eternity that they didn't recognize at this moment in time their future destiny was eternally defined by what they chose to do or not to do. And that will break some of our hearts to know that some that have died and have passed away are in hell today. And there is no salvation except for that with which comes from this life that we live in now to choose to follow Jesus Christ and to serve Him and to walk with Him and to talk with Him and to know Him in an intimate, personal way. That we would be with Him where He is. That wheresoever He goes, we would be with Him. That is eternal life, to know Him and to know the Father. Seeking to get or be anything less than or more than knowing Jesus is not what eternal life is all about. That's eternal deception. And you'll wind up in a lake of fire with it. So the sad part is that many people don't want God in their life. And God will honor that. There's a tragedy that many people don't want Jesus as being Lord of their life. And Jesus will accommodate that. The greatest sorrow that there is in mankind is that he will choose to not let someone rule over him and he will be honored with that. He will be cast into a lake of fire for that. And in all those things, that is what will be honored because they will have chosen with their own lips and their own mouth, their own attitudes and their own actions to go where God has determined they shall be. But you know, I kind of find it encouraging in this kind of different sort of way. I'm glad this isn't my home because looking around I see lots of things wrong with it. I'm glad this isn't kind of my system because I see lots of things wrong with the system. You know, I'm glad this isn't my political process because I see things wrong with that. I'm glad this isn't my social environment because I see things wrong in that. I'm glad that everything in the world is really working antagonistically against what I believe in because I see things wrong with the world. I hope you do too. Because you see, the world is wrong. But we who have been saved and walk in the light are what is right in the world. So take that to heart. Jesus will bring you home. Though it may be for a season we suffer. And we may suffer a certain amount of tribulation. Not the great tribulation per se, but if you do, well, you know, hang in there. You'll overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony and loving their lives not even unto death. Those three things, remember them. Those are what will get you through. But should it be that God spares us even this great tribulation is coming upon the world, then we still will go through some tribulation of spirit and of soul, even of heart and of mind, of emotions and devotion. That it will challenge us to our core to see whatsoever manner of faithful believer we are or we aren't. So today, seek always to find your comfort in the Lord. Seek to find wisdom in the Lord. Seek to go towards your realization that this is not your home, but your home is in the Lord. Because in the Lord you will find peace. Anywhere else 